The next item on the list of new features in Darktable 4.4, I suspect, is broken. Either that or my understanding is broken. Let's work out which it is. Hi, and welcome to episode 131 of Understanding Darktable. Now, the next one on the list, again, relates to the auto-application of presets according to matching criteria, you know, when you import images. We can see here, many modules have default parameters based on image metadata or the current workflow. And in this context, the current workflow refers to that preference that says scene referred sigmoid, scene referred filmic, display referred legacy or none. That's what it means by current workflow. For example, exposure. In a scene referred workflow, the exposure is adjusted using the EXIF exposure compensation value. Blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah, all the way down to color calibration, which is set based on the EXIF metadata. For all of these modules, it is now possible to paste settings while ensuring that the proper image metadata is used to set the module parameters. This is achieved by selecting the reset column in the preset and style dialogues, which makes the module behave as if its reset button has been clicked. When creating or editing presets, a new option, reset all module parameters to their default values has been added. Choose this option to auto add modules to matching images while retaining their default parameters, including any that are set based on image metadata. I think I understand what that means, but I don't see that in practice. For this exercise, I have copied three of my images from my library to my desktop so that I could remove the XMP files. Okay, so we will add them to the library. That's these three here. And by importing them, there are now new XMP files on my desktop. And we'll have a look at this first image. This was our second day in Alaska, uh, and we went sledding with the dogs on Colony Glacier. I could tell you the whole story, but we don't want to get sidetracked. Okay, what we can see is that the color calibration module has determined the white balance for this image to be 4493 Kelvin. For this image, 4536, and for this image, 4548. Okay. You don't need to remember those numbers because I'll stick them up in the corner and you'll be able to see them for the whole time. What we want to do, if I understand it correctly, what is meant by those release notes is that I could save some custom parameters, like maybe do something wild and crazy in these tabs here, and then save that as a preset and whenever matching images are imported those random things that I've put in on the colorfulness and the brightness tab will be applied but the cat tab will still set the white balance according to the EXIF metadata for the image. That's my understanding. Now, maybe I've got it wrong. And if I have, please, someone point me in the right direction because that's not what happens. So what we're going to do is we are going to, let's just also add some gamut compression just to be random. We will store this as a new preset. We'll call it Bruce 1. According to the release notes, we should set this button, reset all module parameters to their default values. And of course, we want to do the auto apply thing so that whenever we import images which match these criteria, this particular preset will be applied. So 
I know that these were all shot at 200 ISO and I know they're all shot between 35 and 80 mil. So that'll do. We'll click OK. And now we will select all, remove from the library, go over to my desktop, get rid of those XMP files, click on add to library and add to library. And now we are back in here. The white balance is still 4493. Colorfulness, nothing. Brightness, nothing. What's going on? We look in here and we can see that my auto preset apparently matches the scene referred default, which I find inconceivable because my preset was supposed to have contained some random settings on the colorfulness tab and the brightness tab, and clearly it does not. So I don't know what's going on there. It seems like some part of saving the preset hasn't worked. Now, there's a part of me that thinks, well, hang on, does this have to do with this reset all module parameters to their default values? Because if that's being applied after the colorfulness and brightness tweaks that I thought I'd saved have been applied, then those things are going to get cancelled out by the very notion of resetting all module parameters to their default values. It seems to me this reset all module parameters to their default values needs to happen first so that the white balance is read from the EXIF metadata for each individual image, and then my random tweaks should be applied. But that's clearly not happening. So then I thought, well, okay, I'm now in the editing phase, so I should be able to uncheck that box just so I can do the test again. So I'll click on OK, and now I will go, I would have expected that to give me an update the preset Bruce one option, but it hasn't. Bear with me here. Let's just do all of our random tweaks again, and they're not gonna be identical values, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. And we'll just save it as a completely new preset. Uh, yes, we wanted a bit of gamut compression as well. So we'll go store new preset and we'll call this Bruce 2. And we'll auto apply so that we match to 200 ISO and anything from 35 to 80 mil. And I'm not going to check the box that says reset all the parameters to their default values. So in theory, any images which match these criteria at the time that they are imported into Darktable, they should get the Bruce 2 preset applied to them. And the Bruce 2 preset should certainly not match the default scene referred default preset, right? In theory. So let's see what happens. Back to the light table, select all, remove, yes. Go to the desktop, get rid of the XMP files, add to library, add to library. And let's check to see what we got. We're getting an error about there being two instances of the color calibration module. Oh, look at this. Scene referred default and Bruce 2. Why? Okay. Let's look at the second module. Yeah, double cat applied. Yes, okay, we understand that. It's applied Bruce 2. Let's edit that preset. Yeah, okay, that's all good. I really don't know what's going on here. I really don't. Because regardless of how I set that checkbox, reset all module parameters to their default values, I do not get an instance where all of my random values in the colorfulness tab and the brightness tab get applied and the 
white balance is set according to what it should be set to. 44.93, 44.93. That's not what the white balance for these two images was originally before we started all of this mucking around. So is the feature broken or is some part of my understanding of what this is meant to do broken? I honestly don't know. If anyone can shed some light on this, I would love to hear from you. And if it turns out that the feature is broken, then great. The devs can work on that and it'll probably get fixed in the next dot release. If it's a case of my understanding is broken, then great. I can learn something too. So I guess I'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so feel free to sing out in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. As for Alaska, it was amazing. Landscapes that are just mind blowing certainly unlike anything you will find in Australia anyway. Absolutely loved it, had a great time, but <laughs> the whole reason for going was to see the Northern Lights. And for the entire three weeks we were there, we had cloud cover like that, solid, for three whole weeks. Not a... Forget the Northern Lights. Didn't even see the stars. I think there was one, one night when we were oh, just outside Denali National Park where we stayed uh, in these cabins where I woke up at about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning and thought, oh, while I'm awake, I should stick my head outside and see if there's any break in the clouds. And there was one little patch of sky where I could see a couple of stars, but the rest of the sky was just black, which told me it was all still covered in cloud. And yep, the whole three weeks was like that. Now, when we were in Fairbanks, which was day two and three, uh, we hired a car for the afternoon and about 15 miles to the east of Fairbanks, there's a little town called North Pole. <laughs> I kid you not. And at North Pole, you will find Santa's Workshop. And Santa's Workshop has every kind of Christmas trinket you can possibly imagine. And a whole bunch of touristy stuff as well. And one of the things that I saw while I was there was a black coffee cup that changes color when you pour hot liquid into it. You've all seen those sort of gimmicky coffee cups. And this one, when you pour hot water into it, lights up with the Northern Lights. Now, at this point of the holiday, I was expecting that I would see the Northern Lights, but I thought, oh, that is so cool. I've got to buy that cup, you know, as a memento of my trip to Alaska to see the Northern Lights. So... It is now a standing joke at work that that is my $25,000 coffee cup because that's as close to the Northern Lights as I got. <laughs> and the 25 grand, that's what we spent on that holiday. Three weeks. As I said to Glenn on the podcast, what can you do? You know, you, you're traveling to the other side of the planet from Australia to hopefully witness an event which is, you know, you, you are very much at the mercy of the elements. You can't plan it. You can't control it. You have to book months and months in advance because you, you know, you need to get accommodation and you need to book in for all of these things that you want to do. And yeah, you just can't tell what Mother Nature is going to serve up when you actually get there. And the, the frustrating part, like even more frustrating than not getting to see the Northern Lights, was the fact that 48 hours after we left Fairbanks, Fairbanks was seeing the Northern Lights. And I was seeing images in my social media feeds of people in Fairbanks who were going, oh, the Northern Lights were epic last night. Like, Seriously? But what can you do? So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but 
beside that, we had an amazing time. Really did. And Denali National Park was just phenomenal. Just epic. Uh, I could sit here and rave about it, but yeah. Anyway, keen to hear anyone's thoughts on what's going on with these auto presets and the, you know, reset the module to its default values debacle because it seems to me that it's not working the way it's meant to but anyway all right i will leave it there uh questions comments sing out down below and i'll catch you in the next one